to Dave's Think Tank. Today I'm going to rebuild the flippers in the Star Trek machine. So let's talk a bit about flippers. I recently had to do the same thing on this upper level flipper here on the vector. You can already see one of the problems right here. The rubber of the flipper was catching against the rubber on a nearby post. So I've trimmed the rubber to prevent that, but this had required the flipper coil to work extra hard. We had some friends over one day and people were playing the game when someone came to tell me this flipper was stuck up. I pressed the button a few times but nothing happened so I turned off the machine and opened it to take a look and the coil was burning hot. I turned the machine off and pulled the flipper apart the next day. A flipper coil has a hole in it for a metal rod to pass through and a plastic sleeve in the hole so the rod moves smoothly. Now this coil, which came out of the vector, had been hot enough to melt the plastic sleeve to the inside. Uh, you can see I couldn't even remove it and the whole thing needed to be replaced. So what's been happening with the Star Trek flipper? Well, it's been sticking up as well, but only occasionally and not for as long, but it needs to be fixed. So let's take a look at a flipper and figure out how it works. When you press the flipper button, you activate the flipper coil, turning on a powerful electromagnet. And this uh, sets in motion a Rube Goldberg series of events, uh, pulling down this metal bar, uh, twisting this and uh, turning that, and eventually uh, pulling the flipper up to hit the pinball and send it across the playfield. Now this powerful magnet can't be left on for long, or it will overheat, as we saw in the vector. So at the end of its stroke, the last thing a flipper does is it hits a switch to turn itself off. But if it's turned off, why doesn't it fall down until we release the button? That's because a flipper coil has two magnets in it. A strong one to pull the, the uh, flipper down firmly and send the ball flying, and a weaker one to hold it up. When it hits the cutoff switch, it only turns off the strong magnet. I say it's a weak magnet, but it's actually fairly strong. Uh, if you press the button to raise the flipper and try to pull it down against the magnet, you'll see what I mean. You probably could pull it back down, but please don't. You, you don't want to break anything. So what's happening with this flipper sticking up? Well, there are two possibilities, mechanical or electrical. That is, something may be interfering, blocking the flipper from being pulled back into place, or the electricity may not be shutting off properly. Since this is an intermittent problem, it's not possible to perform any tests to see which it is. Fortunately, it happened once when I had the glass off. I, I tried to uh, jiggle the flipper to see if anything blocking it could be dislodged, but nothing happened. I tried to pull it down, and it seemed to have the strong pull of a magnet. I can also tell as I pull it up by hand, the action is not smooth. I'm not sure what the issue is, but I do know that this flipper is 45 years old, has a sticky action, is weaker than optimal, and has intermittent problems. So I'm just going to pull it out and replace it with new. And since it's good practice to treat flippers symmetrically, I'm going to replace both of them. Now the work begins. Uh, the idea here is to take off all the parts here and replace them with corresponding parts from this bag. I have not decided yet if I'm replacing the coil. Uh, there's probably nothing wrong with the coil. Uh, if there is, certainly I'll replace it, but if there isn't, uh, it's a pretty expensive item, but I do have a couple extra coils hanging around the house, so, uh, and they're brand new, so I may as well replace them. Anyway, I'll keep you up to date on that. Uh, a couple things I've, I've done, I've unplugged the machine, and uh, I put a box lid in here to catch all the falling parts. Uh, no matter how hard you try, uh, you eventually uh, <laughs> drop a screw, and you can spend a half an hour uh, trying to find it. Uh, so another thing that I like to do, just take a quick picture of, uh, there we go, quick picture of the area that I'm working on. 
uh, you'd be surprised. You'd, you'd think, oh, I'm only trying to keep track of, uh, of a few wires here. I'll remember greens on the left. I'll remember. The, uh, but sometimes you don't. Okay, uh, let's get started. I'm going to take these wires off first. Uh, should just have to heat them up and they should just come right off. There's one. One and two. There. All the wires are off. Before you take out the flippers, you want to find something you can use as a as a spacer to, to make sure you get them back in in the same place with the same gap. Uh, this is actually a, a, a paint stir stick that uh, uh, that I've cut off and it fits just about perfectly. Next thing to come off is the flipper. It's held on with a couple of, uh, of hex screws. Can't take it any further. And that one's coming right out. Yeah. There we go, finally. And the flipper. Well, that just gives you an indication of how worn some of these pieces may be. Take everything off of here. One piece at a time. End of end of uh, stroke switch. Everything is held here just with bolts with uh, Phillips head. Okay, this piece uh, goes right through to the uh, to the upper side, and the flipper goes straight through it. And this comes off. Oh, and this uh, 
This shaft is definitely looking in bad shape. It's the coil that's come off. And there, that comes off. So I think we just leave that piece in place and I'll probably wash everything up and uh, and get back to you. So let's just take a quick look at what we've got here. Uh, this part, the the hole here is supposed to be round. It is uh, it is an oval, so it is worn quite a bit. Uh, this may have been uh, responsible for a lot of the weakness that the uh, uh, that the flipper has had recently. So I've got a new part here. Uh, you can, I don't know if you can tell, but that is round, and it's much rounder than this one. Uh, let's see, this piece... This is supposed to come off. It will not come off. I don't know, it's melted on or something. Uh, so I'll be replacing both of those. I have replacement parts for both of those. Uh, this is really mucky inside, so uh, it's probably also responsible for a lot of the uh, weakness that's going on. This uh, this is called a bushing. Uh, probably nothing wrong with it, but it is, again, it's filthy, so I'll uh, be replacing it. Uh, everything that uh, that is, you know, good enough, but uh, I'm replacing, goes into my post-apocalypse uh, pinball repair kit. So uh, don't worry that anything's, uh, everything's going to be uh, uh, reused at some point. Uh, this uh, this coil, I don't see anything particularly wrong with it, except how dirty it is. Uh, but uh, I'm going to replace it, and it goes into the uh, uh, the repair kit, the spare parts. Now this piece, uh, the replacement for it, only has one uh, only has one uh, uh, hex bolt in it. The other does, the other hole does not have a hex bolt in it. And that should not be a problem. I should be able to reuse the ones that uh, that I already have, except they don't fit. They've changed the size on that. So I'm going to have to get back to my supplier and tell them, look, you gave me this without, uh, without the proper hex bolt. Uh, I actually uh, anticipated this in the past and bought two different types of hex bolts, and uh, neither of them uh, th this one fits the one that I currently have, uh, and so is no good, and this one is... Uh, uh, I thought I was ordering the size for the, the uh, new size, but apparently it is not. So, anyway, I'm going to have to put this back in. Uh, I don't see anything particularly wrong with it, except, again, it's filthy. I will be cleaning it up and putting it back in the machine for now, and hopefully my... Uh, supplier can get me uh, get me a new bolt. And one last item, here's the old switch and uh, it, uh, the contacts on it are, are just about gone. It's uh, it's due to be replaced. So here's the brand new switch and I don't know how well you can see this but uh, the, the contacts are are, uh, are beautiful and clean and, and brand new so uh, if there were any electrical problems, that's a good source of where they may have uh, may have been coming from. So uh, we'll get that in place. I've got all the pieces back together. Uh, I'm not going to show you that because it's a kind of messy business of try to keep six plates spinning while you uh, while you uh, tighten all the screws. But uh, I was going to show you this. I have a tool here for adjusting the uh, uh, the switches and this tool yep, can we see that has a little slot in the end uh, which we can use to just hold that bit of the switch and give it a bit of a twist to make sure we have the gap that we want so we want a good gap on this and when it hits that it opens it quite wide. We can make that a little wider even. We just take this and get it on there. 
and give it a twist. There we go. Yeah, yeah. Give it a twist. Give the other one a little twist in the same direction. And they should be closed good and tight. And when that opens, that'll be open. Okay, now we have to solder these wires back in place. This one is completely rebuilt and I've uh, plugged the machine in, turned it on. Seems to have a real good strong reaction. Uh, the action is really smooth when I move the, move the flipper from this side. Okay, I'm going to try the other one and uh, I'll get back to you. So here's a fun fact I've just figured out. Uh, this is the switch that they've given me. And uh, it's supposed to be a closed switch. So if I touch these two leads, it should beep. And guess what? It doesn't even beep. Uh, what it seems like, based on what happened with the other one, they put some kind of a coating on the on this. Just take a little Windex and wipe that off. And uh, this is what I did with the other one, and uh, made it work. Okay, let's see if that works now. Yep, beeping like crazy. So yes, to prevent oxidation, they put some kind of plastic coating on here, and. Uh, didn't bother to tell anybody. So, useful, useful uh, thing to know. Here we are, two brand new flippers, and the game is up and running and runs like new.